subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 7th of April. Government denies reports of new coronavirus XE variant in India. Maharashtra Health Minister says awaiting report. Sri Lanka's residents struggle with bad business and inflation as economic crisis persists. and women allegedly molested in army hospital in pakistan administered kashmir and now for all the details a day after the civic body of india's financial capital mumbai reported the first case of the xe variant of covid in the city maharashtra state health minister rajesh tope said the health department has not yet received any confirmation regarding the variant and hence the department can't confirm it earlier india's health ministry also denied reports of new coronavirus xe variant in the country amid mounting concerns over the new xe variant of covid and a day after mumbai civic body brihan mumbai municipal corporation reported its first case in the city india's western maharashtra state health minister rajesh tope on thursday said that state health department has not received any confirmation about the variant and thus cannot confirm it india's health ministry on wednesday said that present evidence does not suggest the presence of xe variant of covid denying media reports that claim that a case of the new mutant was reported in mumbai xe cha xe ke bare mein abhi koi bhi confirmed natija natije pe swasthya vibhag nahi aaya hai kyunki uske bare mein niv ka report nahi hai और इसीलिए कोई पैनिक होने की जरूरत नहीं एक्सी इज अ रिकॉम्बिनेंट ऑफ ओमिक्रोन बी ए पॉइंट वन एंड बी ए पॉइंट टू सब लीनेजेस ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन द वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैड रिसेंटली सेट दैट द न्यू कोविड म्यूटेंट एक्सी हैज बिन फाउंड इन द यू के एंड नोटेड दैट इट मे बी मोर ट्रांसमिसिबल दैन द बी ए पॉइंट टू सब लीनेज ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन However the virologist in India have said that it is not clear that the variant is strong enough to cause another covid wave in the country even as they advise to exercise caution and follow covid appropriate behavior meanwhile India's fresh covid-19 cases remained above 1000 for the second straight day but higher recoveries kept the active tally in check the country reported 1033 fresh coronavirus cases in the last 24 hours With this, the country's total tally of coronavirus cases rose to 43 million. The country's active coronavirus case load currently stands at 11,639. The cumulative doses administered in the country so far under the nationwide COVID-19 vaccination drive have exceeded 1.8 billion. Several Indian ministers and ambassadors of different countries performed yoga on Thursday at the Red Fort Monument in New Delhi to celebrate World Health Day. The event also marked the countdown to International Yoga Day to be celebrated on June 21st. Yoga practitioners on Thursday gathered in large numbers at the Red Fort Monument in New Delhi to participate in the program on World Health Day. Ministers, ambassadors of different countries and locals practice yoga asanas or postures as they mark the yoga utsav and create an awareness about following a healthy lifestyle. Yoga, a discipline that dates back thousands of years, has gained immense international prominence over the last several decades as a holistic regime for mind and body. No one can feel just happy and healthy and wonderful. after practicing yoga <laughs> i think yoga makes everyone feels amazing this is one of the greatest contribution of india to humanity i will say the greatest very big pleasure i can uh, confirm you that uh, between the young generation and uh, all uh, parts of uh, population every year we have uh, more uh, events uh, connected with yoga with more participants and uh, with the best understanding that yoga uh, is not uh, only a question of uh, 
physical exercises, but also way of life and uh, thinking and uh, very spiritual uh, uh, thing. On the occasion, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in a series of tweets expressed gratitude towards the health sector. The event at the Red Fort also marked the countdown of International Yoga Day. The United Nations had in 2014 declared June 21st as the International Day of Yoga after adopting a measure proposed by Prime Minister Modi. And in news from Sri Lanka, the island nation of 22 million is battling a severe economic crisis with food, fuel, power and medicine scarcity affecting a large number of the people in the country. While protests continue in the streets of capital Colombo, Sri Lankans say their struggle with the state of the country's economy is severe, even as President Gotabaya Rajpaksa maintained his stance of not resigning. Sri Lanka's residents on Thursday said they continue to struggle with the state of the country's economy, even as President Gotabaya Rajapaksa maintained his stance of not resigning. Debt-laden Sri Lanka has been struggling to pay for imports due to a shortage of foreign exchange and is due to start talks with the International Monetary Fund IMF later this month for a loan program. <laughs> Sri Lankans have been suffering from shortages of fuel, power, food, drugs and other items for weeks. And doctors say the entire health system could collapse. Protests led by young people have continued daily since Sunday and they have said they will not stop until the president meets their demands or resigns. The protesters on Thursday accused the Rajapaksa government of selling everything to China, adding it had bought everything from other countries on credit. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka has appointed a three-member advisory group to assist government officials engaging with the International Monetary Fund, the president said on Wednesday, as the island nation looks to get through a severe economic crisis. The responsibilities of the group of economic and fiscal experts include providing guidance that will address the present debt crisis, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa said in a statement. Meanwhile, reports suggest that Sri Lanka's new central bank governor, Nandalal Veerasinghe, will on Friday hold a monetary policy meeting, a day after he takes office as the government struggles with an economic crisis. The crisis touched off political chaos this week when the entire cabinet of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa quit, followed by the resignation of the central bank chief Ajit Nivard Cabral. The government is also struggling to replace Ali Sabri, who quit as the finance minister on Tuesday, a day after his appointment. And moving on, a native of Pakistan-administered Kashmir has appealed for help from India, blaming that his wife was allegedly molested by a Pakistan army doctor at a military-run hospital in Muzaffarabad in the illegally occupied region, where their son was undergoing treatment after an accident. Speaking about the incident in a video on social media, he said that he wanted his family to be rescued from Pakistani rule, as in Pakistan-administered Kashmir, neither the people are safe nor do they have any economic opportunities. तो निकाल दें लेकिन मैं कमांडर साहब से गुजारिश करना चाहता हूं कि कमांडर साहब अगर इस तैयब नामी शख्स के खिलाफ अगर आपने कार्रवाई ना की और उस कार्रवाई को पब्लिक ना किया तो यकीन करें कि मैं मजबूर मैं मजबूर होकर मैं यहां पर दुबई में मौजूद इंडियन एम्बेसी में मुझे जाना पड़ेगा और वहां पे जाकर मुझे बाकायदा तौर पे ये तमाम चीजें बतानी पड़ेंगी कि हम यहां पर जिस मुल्क में हम हमारे बॉयदाद गलती से चले गए थे हम उस गलती का जाला करना चाहते हैं हमें ब्राय मेहरबानी वापस ले लो क्योंकि इस मुल्क में ना हमारे लिए कोई रोजगार है और ना ही हमारी औरतों की इज्जतें महफूज हैं the international criticism of Taliban's decision to extend the closure of secondary schools for girls in Afghanistan has remained strong. The UN, European Union and international human rights organizations have all condemned the group for denying rights to education to girls and demanded it must reverse the decision. The Taliban's decision in Afghanistan to keep schools for girls over grade 6 closed has continued to draw strong reactions by various countries and international organizations. Schools for Afghan girls were ordered by the Taliban to close hours after they were reopened on March 23, citing there was a lack of standardized uniforms for girls' students. The UN assistance mission in Afghanistan has called the ban shocking, 
The Ireland mission to the UN said on Twitter, there is no justification for denying the right to education to Afghan girls for more than 200 days. While Heather Barr of the Human Rights Watch said, the Taliban seems to have stopped giving any pretense of appeasing aid donors. Josep Borrell Fontelis, European Union's foreign policy chief said, the Taliban must reverse the decision as women must be equal partners in shaping new Afghan reality. The Taliban must reverse these decisions. The decision to deny education to girls, not for us, not for the sake of the international community, but for the sake of the future of the people of Afghanistan, for themselves, for their people. Meanwhile, Matt Nudsen, the Deputy Special Representative of the UN Secretary General, met with media representatives of Afghanistan on Wednesday and urged the Taliban to end draconian measures against journalists. The Human Rights Watch had last month said the Taliban have intensified attacks on media in the country. And the Tibetan Opera Festival, popularly known as the Shuton, is attracting scores of visitors from across the country to India's northern hill town of Dharamshala. As part of the week-long cultural extravaganza, opera artists are impacting Tibetan folk stories. Exiled Tibetans in India's northern hill town of Dharamsala are observing the 25th Shotan Festival, which is also popularly known as the Yogurt Banquet Festival. The week-long cultural extravaganza is witnessing performances by scores of Tibetan opera singers at the Tibetan Institute of Performing Arts in Dharamsala. The festival was originally a religious occasion when locals would offer yogurt to monks who had meditation retreats. Through these cultural performances and songs, the singers convey the message of love and compassion. The festival enacts Tibetan folk stories in the indigenous form of opera showcased through the unique Tibetan dramatic art form. Shotan festival is like really, it's a unique for our all Tibetan peoples. There's no other like uh, anyone can do. Like I can, like we always say that it's the opera song that nobody like uh, really can sing like the Tibetan opera song. And through the opera we are telling to the audience the message of um, uh, compassion, love, tolerance, respect like that. No. So this is uh, something uh, something which we can change the young people. The organizers said the festival aims to remind the young generations to promote and preserve the Tibetan performing arts. The festival will conclude on 13th of April. India's northern German Kashmir territory is home to famed Dal Lake, Inshia's largest tulip garden, picturesque mountains and glaciers. The region is attracting record tourists after the easing of pandemic restrictions and some improvement in the security situation, bolstering local businesses. India's northern Jammu and Kashmir region is attracting record tourists after the easing of pandemic restrictions and some improvement in the security situation, bolstering local businesses. Dotted as heaven on earth, Jammu and Kashmir is home to the famed Dal Lake. The lake's famous houseboats are major attractions along with the nearby Indira Gandhi Tulip Garden, Asia's largest, and the region's mountains and glaciers. Tourist arrivals are set to touch a 10-year height this year, after more than 340,000 tourists have come since January, local tour operators and government officials said. Despite restrictions on foreign tourists, and some recent incidents of violence. If we compare the figures of last 10 years, then we can bilkul confidently say that this is the best you know, tourist footfall uh, ever we had during the last 10 years. Um, keeping in view the you know, pand pandemic situation and then other challenges also, um, we could have this kind of uh, uh, better footfall because of a vigorous campaign we followed uh, within uh, you know, a whole country at different locations. Many hoteliers and houseboat owners said tourists have booked rooms in advance for the next couple of weeks and the earnings helped them to pay part of their debts. After a gap of years, hoteliers, taxi drivers and tour operators are doing a brisk business. 
Oh, the climate is really good and I have known that it's a real beautiful place to visit and uh, it's really great. We had a real nice time here and uh, the condition has really improved in Kashmir than previous times and terrorist attacks and things like that. It has really improved. Along with horticulture and agriculture, tourism is an important industry for Jammu and Kashmir, contributing about 7% to its economy according to government data. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.